visibly changed and in the grid for fully differentiated any plastic food this implies that the histological examinations of very poorly differentiated new plants undifferentiated that does not resemble any normal tissue. These tumors are always malignant and usually behave very aggressive. In the same manner, the stage mean it refers to the extent of the spread of the tumor assigned at the time of diagnosis. Stage is informed by both clinical and pathological examination. Why the stage is so important? It is important because it is the determinant of prognosis. The stage refers to the extent of spread of the tumor assigned at the time of diagnosis. The stage is informed by both clinical and pathological examination. So, question arises why the stage is so important? Because it is the determinant of the prognosis, it determining the type of treatment options available, such as surgery, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy. The DNA system is developed by the International Union Against the Cancer. So, T stands for the size of the tumor, N stands for the presence or the absence of the lymph node metastasis, and the M is the presence or absence of distinct metastasis. So, collectively, they are part in the T and M. The International Union Against Cancer. The system for breast is as follows. The TI is carcinoma in situ. T1 is the drop size of tumor is less than 2.0 cm diameter. T2 drop size of tumor is between 2 to 5 cm diameter. T3 drop size of tumor is above 5 cm diameter. T4 is the tumor of any size involving chest form or the skin. N0, it is no ethylene no involved. So you just say if breast carcinoma occurs, but it, it is still in the viscidity of the breast and it doesn't involve the ethylene nodes, so we call it the N0 ethylene node involved. Same wise, the N1, the node metastasis to the ancillary node, they are freely mobile. You see, there are N2 metastasis to the fixed immobile ancillary nodes, and the N3 metastasis to the internal membrane nodes. Next one is the M0, no metastasis outside of the local nodes. Or M1 is the metastasis is present. So, as we discussed a little bit epidemiology in last lecture, so uh, somehow we uh, we have to uh, revise and in addition, why epidemiology is useful because it allows you to know what is common and what is safe. It can provide clues to etiology. It can facilitate planning of preventive measures. It underpins the development of screening methods for early diagnosis. A range of factors can influence the epidemiology of the disease. This includes age variation, gender differences, historical variations, geographic variations, 
social and economic factors, occupational factors, dietary factors, genetic factors. Incidents may be related to the ethnic and geographic differences in community. So, when we talk about the cervical cancer, the Hispanic women are significantly more likely to be diagnosed with cervical cancer than the general population. In same as the multiple myeloma, is twice as common in African Americans as it is in white Americans. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It is more common among the Jewish people of East European descent, and it is rather uncommon in Asia. Same is the gastric carcinoma. As you know, its incidence is high in Japan. In carcinoma of the skin, it's high in New Zealand. Hepatocellular carcinoma high in Africa and China. Breast carcinoma high in USA. Prostatic carcinoma high in USA. Colorectal carcinoma high in USA. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma Far East, and the Bacterial lymphoma is more common in Africa. The genetic polymorphism is responsible for individual predisposition to disease individual response to environmental agents and individual response to drugs. How environment effect are causing the tumor formation? It depends on the diet, occupation, sunlight, and the personal habits. So first of all, we uh, look on the age wise. In general, the cancer incidence <coughs> According to age, however, certain cancer occurs more in children, like acute leukemia, some lymphoma, some CNS tumors, bone and soft tissue trauma. And, and if we discuss hereditary bites, then these are the 5 to 10 percent of tumors. The inherited cancer syndromes, like presence of defined genetic abnormality, usually. AD, often a specific phenotype like APC gene in familial adenomatous polyposis for life, men one and RET genes in men syndrome, NF1 and NF2 genes in neurofibromatosis, RD gene in retinoblastoma, familial cancer, no specific phenotype and multiple specific phenotype Family members have higher incidence to common cancers. These are the carcinoma of colon, breast, and OP. The younger age groups, multiple or bilateral, two or more family members are affected, and some link to the inheritance of mutant genes like BRCA1 and BRCA2. इसी तरह दूसरा जो है कि acquired pre-neoplastic syndrome यानी pre-neoplastic यानी neoplastic से पहले की condition ये तो ultimately change होगी आगे जाके neoplastic ये tumor-like condition these are associated with the increased risk for CA and most are related to rapid or abnormal cell proliferation इसमें कौन-कौन से आ जाएंगे endometrial hyperplasia and the carcinoma, cervical dysplasia and cervical carcinoma, bronchial dysplasia and lung carcinoma, liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma, chronic healing process, ulcerative colitis and colorectal carcinoma, villus adenoma and colorectal carcinoma, and leukoplakia and squamous cell carcinoma. <coughs> In last lecture, we have discussed the molecular basis of the tumor. In our last one point is the invasion and metastasis. The two properties, invasion and metastasis, account for most of the serious and the lethal consequences of the nucleus 
metastasis is the process where by malignant tumor cells spread from the site of origin primary site jahan wo ho raha hai shaan shuru ho raha hai to some other distant site in the body second site yani wo ek jagah se shuru ho raha hai aur yani dusre point pe ja ke wo usse dur khatam ho raha hai this size and differentiation of the primary neoplasm may play role in the metastatic potential all tumors can potentially metastasize except major cell carcinoma and glial tumors these two tumors rarely metastasize not all the cancers have equivalent ability to metastasize the basal cell carcinoma of the skin and the most primary tumors of the skin is like glial tumor are highly invasive at their primary site but the rarely metastasize Postogenic carcinoma usually have metastasized to the lungs at the time of initial discovery. Metastasis occurs in two phases. First one is the invasion of extracellular matrix, and the second one is the vascular dissemination. <coughs> so, in the diagram, there are the main stages in the formation of metastasis. First one is the primary tumor. and you can see there is this one is the primary tumor this will lead to the proliferation or endogenization any new blood formation uh, blood vessel formation the detach detachment and the invasion then embolism embolism ka ho jayega phir circulation mein aa jayega extravasation uske baad circulation se nikle ga extravasate ho jayega ke baad establishment of a micro environment then the proliferation of angiogenesis isi tarah ye embolism jo hai ye transport hoga heart mein fir uske baad rest in the organs adherent to the vessel wall and then extravasate and move to the <coughs> establishment of the micro environment proliferation angiogenesis and that's how the metastasis starts how the mechanism of invasion of ecm works so first of all the detachment of the tumor cell there is the inactivation of e cadherin or activation of beta cadherin which leads to the detachment of the tumor cells and there is loss of function e cadherin in most cells number two the detachment of extracellular matrix by proteases for example matrix metalloprotein is such as catechin d type 4 collagenase the number 3 point of the mechanism of invasion is the detachment of tumor cells to the matrix component by laminin and integrin receptors to basement membrane in ec then the migration of the tumor cell tumor divide traps cytokines like autoclein रिट्रेक्शन <laughs> and it will lead in the vessel number 2 these are attacked by the natural killer cells come escape by the formation of the tumors and they then escape from the circulation to the end to the endothelium and the refraction of endothelium will result in escape to the tissue what influences site of metastasis anatomical location complementary adhesion molecule between tumor cells and target organs chemo attractants liberated by the target organs and the protease inhibitors present in certain tissues so what these are the examples of tropism or homing prostatic carcinoma ultimately <coughs> metastasis in the bone same is lung carcinoma will be metastasis in adrenals and the brain neuroblastoma 
in the liver and bone and less common sites of metastasis include the skin, muscle, thyroid, breast. In jagam ke jo hai, wo tumor jo hai, bahut kam metastasis. The spleen, cartilage, hearts are almost never involved by the metastatic tumors. Now we move on to the carcinogenic agents. What is carcinogens? Three major types of the carcinogens. Number one, chemical. Number two, radiations. And number three, viral and microbial. <coughs> Chemical carcinogens, the direct carcinogens. There are two types, direct and indirect. The direct ones are the direct and produce damage without prior metabolic conversion, while the indirect carcinogens, through carcinogens, metabolic conversion in liver by a microbial cytochrome P450 dependent monooxygenase found in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocytes, which leads to the ultimate carcinogen. The action of chemical carcinogen. There are the initiators and the promoters. What do the initiators do? They chemical inducing irreversible DNA damage. Meaning they induce the irreversible DNA damage. And the promoter, what does they do? They augment the effect of the initiator by promoting cell growth. For example, 4 volt ester VTA activates signal transcription or growth factor secretion hormone and signal. No tumor develops unless the promoter is applied after the initiation. There is a difference between the promoter and initiator. Initiator. The first one is the mechanism. In initiator, if there is an induction of mutation, while the promoter is there is no mutagenic action. Number two, dose. In initiator, there is a single dose for a short time, while in promoter, the repeated doses exposure for a long time are required. Number three is the response. In initiator, there is a sudden response while in the promoter there is a slow response. Number four, change. In initiator, there is a permanent irreversible change while in the promoter change may be irreversible. Number five, sequence is applied first followed by a promoter while in the promoter applied after prior exposure to the promoter. Number six, effectivity. The initiator is effective alone if exposed in large doses. Did you go on would you go on Number six, effectivity. Effective alone or if exposed in large doses, while in the promoter, not effective alone. And the number seven point is the molecular changes. The most common mutation are RAS oncogen, anti 53, anti GT, anti oncogen. And in the promoter, clonal expansion of the mutated cells are required. The mode of action in chemical carcinogen the chemical carcinogen contains highly reactive electrophilic groups. They combine to DNA, RNA, or proteins producing mutations. Genes commonly affected are ROS and T53. May be very specific signature mutations. Some strong chemicals act as the initiator and promoter, like polycyclic hydrocarbon. <coughs> Alkylating agents direct, these are the direct agents used in the chemotherapy of cancer, cyclophosphamide can cause leukemia and lymphoma. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, these are the indirect acting. These are very strong. Can cause cancer in the region of contact, like lung and the bladder cancer. It is found in tobacco smoke, smoke leaves, and fish. Aflatoxin B1, these are the naturally occurring carcinogens. 
present in fungus aspergillus flavors, which causes the hepatocellular carcinoma. The nitrosamines endogenous or food receptors. It is converted to the nitrites in the GI tract, which may cause gastric cancer and other GI cancers. The aromatic amines and azodyes, like rubber and food industry, for example, methanephthalamine, which causes the CA bladder. Asbestos, there is ship insulation, which causes the lung carcinoma, physiocloma, and GI carcinomas. Vinyl chloride, these are the rare types, causes the rare type of liver carcinoma. Chromium nickel causes lung carcinoma, arsenic causes the skin carcinoma. The second point is the physical carcinogens, which include the UV light. This effect depends on intensity of the exposure and quantity of melanin. There is a production of pyrimidine dimers in DNA, which leads to the mutation in the ROS and P53. There is a failed repair, which leads to the skin carcinoma. Skin cancer includes <coughs> squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and the melanoma. Next point in the physical carcinogen is the ionizing radiation. The explosion increases the leukemia after seven years and latent period, which results in the increased incidence of breast, colon, and thyroid and lung carcinoma. Leukemia, for example, chronic lymphocytic leukemia represents the most common radiation induced cancer in the humans. The therapeutic exposure increases the risk of thyroid carcinoma and leukemia and mechanism. The free radical injury, which causes the mutation in RAS, RV, and T53 genes. The third point is the viral and microbial carcinogenesis. This includes the emerging phase, the DNA virus, RNA virus, and other organisms. RNA oncogen viruses, the human T cell leukemia virus type 1, RNA retrovirus targets transform T cell, causing T cell leukemia and lymphoma. Transmitted like HIV, but only 1% of infected develop T cell leukemia or lymphoma. No cure or vaccine exists for human T cell leukemia virus, treatable with chemotherapy, but less case common. The DNA oncogenic, oncogenic viruses are human papilloma virus, which is a sexually transmitted virus. There are two types, benign HPV and the malignant HPV. The low risk groups are 6 and 11, which causes the genital squamous cell papilloma. And the high risk group are uh, numbers of 16 and 18, which causes the squamous cell carcinoma in cervix, vulva, perianal, and oropharyngeal regions. Epstein Barr virus infects B lymphocytes and epithelial cells of oropharynx and may result in malignancy. Burkitt's lymphoma, B cell lymphoma, and immunosuppressed, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Next one is the hepatitis B virus, has a strong association with liver cancer, and herpes virus A causes Kaposi sarcoma. Bacteria infecting stomach implicated in the urticulture, gastric carcinoma, marginal zone lymphomas, mucosa associated B cell lymphomas. The best and strongest evidence links Helicobacter pylori infection with the onset of mucosa associated B cell lymphomas of the stomach, which are also known as marginal zone lymphomas. It is thought that H. pylori activate T cells, which in turn promote polyclonal proliferation of the B cells in the gastric mucosa. In this process, some cells obviously become malignant and give rise to T cell independent low grade molecular lymphomas. How tumors affect on the host? This topic we will discuss <coughs> in the next lecture. So I am informed that some of you have missed the first slides or you couldn't understand. So we are starting from the very first 
So what is grading and staging? Grading, it is a cellular differentiation on the microscopic basis. As we see, this one is the grade one. So it is well differentiated, where we differentiate this uh, size and shape of the cell nucleus. <coughs> so when we move to the G2 grade, grade two, so somehow the size and shape of the cell is changed. And as we further move to the G3, the further changing in the size and shape and in the cell and nucleus is also seen. And in the grade four, it is totally undifferentiated. While in the staging, it is a progression or a grade on clinical basis. In clinical basis, we will judge that the tumor is staging. So, grade. It is based on the degree of differentiation of the tumor. It is the degree to which a tumor cell resembles its presumed normal counterpart. In general, a low grade, well differentiated tumor is a less aggressive force than a high grade, poorly differentiated tumor. Anaplastic neoplasm implies that histological examination shows a very poorly differentiated neoplasm that does not resemble any normal condition. These tumors are always malignant and usually behave very aggressively. The stage, the stage refers to the extent of the spread of the tumor assigned at the time of diagnosis. The stage is informed by both clinical and pathological examination. The question arises why the stage is so important. Because it is the determinant of the prognosis. It is it determining the type of treatment options available such as surgery, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy. The stage, the TNM system is developed by International Union Against Cancer. The stage can be defined by the this TNM system. The T is Referred as size of tumor, N is the presence or absence of lymph node metastasis, and M is the presence or absence of distant metastasis. So the system for this is as follows. So T i is the carcinoma in situ. T1 is the gross size of tumor is less than, less than 2.0 centimeter diameter. Yani hum grossly jab hum tumor ko visualize karenge, to agar wo Grossly, two centimeters se kam hoga, to usse hum staging T1 me denge. <coughs> Isi tarah T2 me gross size of the tumor is between two to five centimeter diameter. In T3, the gross size of tumor is above five centimeter. And T4, the tumor of any size involving chest wall or the skin. Now, what uh, N stands for the axillary uh, or sorry, the lymph node involvement. N0 means no axillary nodes are involved. N1 metastasis to the axillary nodes that are freely mobile. N2 metastasis to fixed or immobile axillary nodes. N3 metastasis to the internal memory nodes. If there are metastasis M0, no metastasis outside of the local nodes, and M1 metastasis is present. So, these slides were the revision of the last lecture. So, this is the end of the today's section. So we will meet inshallah next Tuesday. Is there any question?